Today we're going to play with more rubber bands. Welcome back friends. So I had another, another plan for some rubber bands and um, I have this tube and I wrapped some rubber bands around it. Uh, these prints came out kind of interesting. So let's take a look. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using a tube from probably like a contact paper or something like that. It's a pretty sturdy tube, but you can use the tube inside the paper towels. And I'm using the longer one instead of the toilet paper because I, I really want to go you know, the full width of my um, eight by 10 jelly plate. So I have this pack of rubber bands and they're different size rubber bands as well as thicknesses. So they're gonna give me a variety and I'm also letting them bunch up as I'm putting them on. So that'll make something interesting as well. So anyway, you get the idea. I just fill the, you know, most of the tube with these rubber bands and let's just get started. So I'm definitely, I have enough rubber bands on there to fill my plate, probably both horizontal and, you know, on the wider end, I should say, and the, and the narrower side. So I'm gonna start with a single color and just, let's just test this and see what it looks like. We're just going to roll it evenly. And I'm using rice paper to pick it up. Now, even the simplest prints like this could really be very useful in collage. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if all you make is simple prints, you know? Go for it. So this could also make a really nice background in a journal page or whatever. You have a little lacing going on there too. Uh, anyway, this is quinacridone red. So I thought I had enough, but I really didn't. When you don't put enough paint down, you start to lift the paint back off. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. So I'm just doing the same thing again, but I'm also gonna go in the opposite direction. And I'm gonna go over the first print. So I'm waiting anywhere between one and a half to two minutes and using a very fluid paint. So it dries pretty fast. I like how the yellow is peeking through that red. This is a Payne's Gray. And I'm going to pick this up with some deli paper. I, was, I started to pick it up with the rice paper, but I, I changed my mind. I wanted at least one of these papers to be transparent. And with deli paper, you don't have to wait too long. You can just like lift almost right away. And I tried to pick up what little was left on the plate on top of this. I got very little of it, just a little couple of specks. 
I'm using Nova color paint and it does dry very quickly. So I didn't get to, um, anyway, I decided I'm gonna like really do a messy job here. I'm not gonna even put, you know, really fill the plate with paint. I really like this kind of grungy look. So I'm gonna just let that dry and then we'll pick it up with another color. Okay, so my paint has dried. I'm gonna pick this up with Indian yellow. I'm making sure my brayer has only dried Payne's Gray on it. And we're gonna pick this up with rice paper. Like I said, we're going to wait about a minute and a half to two minutes on each of these prints, but this paint dries pretty fast, so I think it's more like a minute and a half. And we have some beautiful grunge going on here. The Payne's Gray went almost black, but it's gorgeous. Okay, this bottle has my mixture of phthalo tur turquoise with Hansa yellow and a little bit of white. Not a whole lot of white, as you can see. It's still a very deep color, but I warmed it up a little bit with the Hansa yellow. And I slipped a little, so I decided let's, okay, let's play with that. Let's slip a little bit more. That gives us kind of an interesting pattern. So now again, we have to wait for this to dry. Luckily, we don't have to wait too long with this paint, like I said. So I was peeking to see what the best color would be. Uh, anyway, I have this yellow green, really vibrant color. And I think it's gonna be a nice complement to this other phthalo turquoise. So I'm putting a thin coat You're picking up with rice paper again. Okay, so I did wait for the paint to dry under the paper. And look at that gorgeous color. Yeah, those two colors look good together. So again, that's the yellow green Thalo turquoise with a touch of fancy yellow and white. Okay, so I'm gonna play a little bit now. I'm getting a little more daring with these, with these rubber bands on the tube. So I'm mixing the Indian yellow with the quinacridone red a little bit. And I'm just making a simple background. I love those two colors when you mix them together. For some reason, I think I got like a hair on the plate. <laughs> I lose a lot of hair. Okay, so now we're going back to Payne's Gray. Again, I'm slipping a little bit. We're then going to go also at the bottom, I do some swipes. And we're gonna go right over our background. So I wanted to show you both, you know, like multiple layers with a single pull and individual layers. So whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you do.
and it also depends on your paint. If you have a slow drying paint, then you know maybe do individual layers like this so you don't have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so now we're going back. We're gonna on this one. We're gonna do like a multicolor. I like doing some color blocking. We blend the colors a little bit, but not a whole lot. Bright green is nice, but you have to be careful because it can turn to mud. So I figured I'd go over a second time in the other direction. Now we have a real striped effect and we've got some more blending. So I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, we're going to use white to pick this up. And we got some really nice darks in there too where the paint sort of uh, blended together. So we've got some really nice variations in here. I love it. Okay, again, this is the Payne's Gray. See how it's already starting to lace? That's because I didn't have enough paint. So I can't say this enough. If you are watching me and you're not getting the same results, I'm trying to get some transparency here with the, the runoff of the paint from my rubber bands. Uh, but anyway, I cannot say this enough. It, it all depends on you, the paint that you are using. So I'm using a fast drying paint. If you are using a different kind of paint, like an Amsterdam or uh, Liquitex or Blick or any of those that seem kind of like creamy, they are going to take a little longer to dry, most definitely. So just make sure your paint is dry if you're doing multiple layers with a single pull. So I really like that other color combination of the Payne's Gray and the Indian Yellow, so I'm doing it again. This one is a little more heavy on the Payne's Gray than the other one, and I think it'll be a nice compliment if I put them in the same collage. So I'm noticing most of my pulls are coming up very cleanly, even my edges. I'm not leaving any paint behind. And again, the Payne's Gray looks very black against the yellow, which is expected. But look at how nice those two papers look together. So usually I am planning a collage or something when I'm, when I'm working like this. And, you know, what, what might I need for that collage, you know? I'm always thinking ahead. But I decide I'm only going to do, I'm going to leave kind of the edges a little bit. And we're going to do a multi-layer here, I think. 
So we have to let this paint dry. I think this one ends up being three layers. So I'm adding a little bit of white to the Indian yellow. I'm just mixing on the plate. So a lot of times when I'm rubbing, I'm feeling for the coolness. I'm not really like rubbing because the paper needs um, contact with the paint. This paper absorbs. This is a beautiful rice paper that just, you know, grabs that paint immediately. So it really doesn't need a lot of rubbing. That's why I don't really work with a Baron very much. I just need to lay this paper down and I can even walk away. I'm mostly rubbing on the plate because I'm looking to see if the paint is still cool. So it's a very subtle paper. Let's see if we can add another layer. Okay, so I'm going back to the blue and again, I'm just going to go down the center Go back and forth. I'm really going to go in many different directions. I like how it's even going into the area where there is no paint. And I'm going over that print that I just did. So I love it now. It needed some kind of contrast. This is not a major contrast, but it's, it's quite nice. And I love that bottom area. So I'm thinking that's inspiring me to do another. I'm gonna start with the yellow background this time. I did, we do have some green in there from the brayer. And that will just add to the final print. Okay, so we're now going to lay down some quinacridone red. Mostly down the middle. And again, we're going to we're going to do a little bit of experimenting here. We're going to really rough it up. We're going to go over that yellow. Yeah, definitely the green is adding to this. So now right down the middle, I'm going to do the Payne's Gray. making sure that I'm getting the Payne's Gray into the area where there's no paint. And this is our third layer. This is going to be a high contrast one. So usually if you already have paint on a paper and you're now picking up a layer, you know, these individual layers like this, they, they usually pick up pretty fast. So you don't have to wait two minutes. Now this is with rice paper. Keep that in mind. But I find that the paint does help pull it. And that is spectacular. So this is my favorite, obviously. 
I'm not that surprised that the last one would be my favorite. All right, so let's do some reviewing here. So this was my very first print, simple, two layers of, I did, I did the rubber bands on both the yellow layer and the red, probably the, um, the yellow one wasn't necessary, but I was also testing how it comes out. I do like it on the deli paper. I think it's going to be interesting. Some areas are going to have some interesting transparency. This paper I absolutely love. I went for total grunge on this. You can't even tell that I'm using a rubber band thing. So then we did some, you know, slippage. We tried to make some patterns with some, by allowing the rubber band to slip on the plate. And then this is uh, going in opposite directions and diagonally. We went back to straight back and forth, but back and forth on this one, blended the colors nicely. And then this was the multi-layer, and another multi-layer with more contrast. So this is, this, like I said, this last one is my favorite. I, I like hung high contrast prints the most, and I cannot wait to use that one in a collage. So this session resulted in a nice variety of papers. So I'm very, very pleased with how today went. I especially like the Indian yellow paint was a good addition to my Nova Color set. All right, so thank you for watching. These prints came out so good that I immediately put them into a collage <laughs> for my patrons over on Patreon. So anyway, they're already used. I have a couple left, I think. But anyway, this was a lot of fun. I'm really happy with, um, you might have noticed that my early prints were very, very simple. So what I was doing was figuring out, okay, what, do, what does this do? Let's see what this does. Let's do simple two color prints. Just see what it does. Then I started to get a little more playful with it. And in the end, I, I loved when I overlapped and I went on a diagonal and I did only partial color on the plate and then overlapped on another one. I mean, it was, it all started to like really become fun. But in the beginning, when you're first doing something for the first time, you've got to first see what are the results you're going to get if you just do it first, you know, straightforward. What kind of marks is this going to make? and uh, how can I make this better comes after, right? All right, so I think I successfully made them better after. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject, but I really enjoyed this one. I will definitely, I'm gonna keep this on hand and I am definitely gonna use it again. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Don't forget, create, inspire, and share. Take care. Bye-bye.